Okay, I just finished doing a couple of blades. These are my favorite knives. These are off-grid fat boys. These have been Cerakoted. And these are in some pretty spectacular looking knives. But I'm gonna try and experiment right now, live. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. But we make these stainless steel business cards, Gorilla Pro Customs. Little plug there. A shameless plug. And these cards, I've had several customers ask me because I have lots of knives in my store also. Hey, you know, can you sharpen one of those cards and make it into a razor? And I have no idea. This is probably uh, not the right tool for the job. But I have a few minutes before my wife yells at me for being out in the garage too long. I think I do anyway. Yeah, it's 8.30. And uh, probably will not get in the doghouse, but you never know. Guys, do you know what I'm talking about, being in the doghouse? I'm sure you do. So we're going, uh oh, that's over full. Get that wet, soak up some of that water. Alright, we're going to bring this. Actually, we'll try a little bit with the thousand grit first and just see what happens. I don't think it's going to do anything, um, but we're going to find out when I put the card. So I brought an extra card home tonight. These are stainless steel. Destro is one of our companies. And of course, Gorilla Pro Customs, we do the knives, guns. We do some really cool stuff. So this is my signature. With that pattern all over the whole thing. I'm not gonna get too, fur, too much further into it because this is loaded. I don't want to hear any crying from all you. You didn't sh display a weapon on YouTube and it, when it was unloaded. You didn't prove whatever, dude. I carry a little weapon all day, every day. Get over yourself if you're worried about it. Firearm safety. Well, I haven't shot anybody yet, so let's hope that uh, I keep that up. So, if this does turn out, I want to be able to uh, use this card again as a sample show my clients. Yeah, sure, we can make your business card into a razor blade. We have thousands of customers that uh, we make these cards for. This is pretty thin, so I'm going to triple up the tape. Make sure we're able to get a good grip on this. And it may be too flimsy. I may have to reinforce it with something else. I don't know. We're going to find out. But this is my business card. It's got to go down. And this is flat, so it's pretty easy to lay it up against the back edge. And I suppose 25 degrees or so. I mean, I've never made a uh, razor knife out of a business card before, so this might not even work. That angle is going to be way too steep, and I don't think this will even go up that high. Maybe it will. Let's take this all the way in. How far it will go. Looks like that's maxed out. I'm gonna take this all the way up and see what angle we can even get with it before this thing falls right out. I might not be able to do this, so we'll try 25 degrees-ish. And we're still a long way from that. I don't think this thing will go that high. Maybe, we're getting close. We're at 26. There's 25 degrees right there. Hmm. Okay, it went high enough. But it's not attached to anything. All right, let's rethink this. Maybe I can get this further in here. Let's loosen this up. So we can get it to go past. Nope, it's gonna stop in there. So that's as far as it's gonna go in. So that's weird. So if I had a knife, 
that just stuck out this far, this doesn't go high enough uh, to get the appropriate angle. That's very interesting. Hmm. Because this is not even in anymore. At this point, it doesn't matter. Let's see how high we can get it and still get a grip on this. That's as high as it goes. So let's see what angle that is. That's let's just loosen this and see where it lands. So that's where it's at. So that is 21 and a half degrees. Okay, we'll try it. Why not? Now this is set to a thousand grit, so this is probably way too thin. It's going to take forever though. Let's rough it back up. Probably would be better off on a uh, angle grinder or just about anything but what I'm doing. But this is a uh, spur of the moment experiment, so let's just see what happens. should have just destroyed that wheel. And this is a rare opportunity to do something that's actually straight. Every knife I do seems to be uh, something. Might be a long time to get an edge on here. Plus this is bending. This might just be a dumb idea. But these cards are, wow. Huh. It's got a little edge on it. Let's ease up on a little bit. That was quick. I started the video like 15 minutes ago, so I'll give you a recap. My company makes stainless steel business cards like this, no Pro Customs, Desk Jewelry, and I thought it'd be a really fun project to see if we can uh, put an edge on a stainless steel business card. So I've been here for the past 15 minutes, adjusting the wheel, blah, blah, blah. And then my wife called, and I thought, well, maybe I should answer the phone before I get in trouble. And then I realized I didn't hit record. So we've actually gotten a little bit of a burr. Um, this is the Tormek T8. How to convert a business card, a stainless steel business card, into a, uh, to a weapon, a real weapon. Now, I don't know if I'm able to get a good edge on this. I mean, what will I do with it, honestly? Am I going to carry it in my pocket? Probably not. Plus, I noticed I reached the limitations of this. This is as high as it will go, and I still can't get the angle that I would like. So if you had a knife that stuck out, you know, this much past the jig, what would you do? You couldn't get 
a 25 degree angle, you get much uh, sharper angles, but I'm not looking to do, you know, 18 or 20 degrees on this. I don't know if this is going to work or not, we'll see. Seems to be working. Theoretically, why wouldn't it work? I mean, knives don't start out sharp. But this certainly isn't the right equipment to be doing this. get a really nice burr. Maybe it will work out. This would be a hell of a credit card knife. I've seen lots of those. Most of them are a little cheap piece of plastic from, you know, uh, China for like 32 cents in Alibaba. If I can cut paper with this when I'm done, I'll be shocked. I don't think I can, but probably I just don't think I have enough patience, but we'll see. And this is very flexible and flimsy. I mean, it's a really, really heavy business card. This is very flimsy. Huh, I feel a nice burr. And I don't want to use the honing tool on it or the honing wheel. Otherwise, I'll uh, end up messing up the card. I don't even think the card is straight anymore. It's not. I've taken too much material out of the center. But whatever. This is an experiment. And so it cost me a couple bucks, whatever. It's got a little edge on it. Let's, uh, let's switch this from 220 to 1000. And hell, we might even finish off with the, the Japanese whetstone. Why not, right? This stone has a dry spot in it. So that came out nice and smooth. Pretty smooth. Can get better. Still a little rough. See it catching? What is that? If you know what that is, please leave a comment. It's like there's a dry spot in the stone. At least that's what I call it. I'm sure there's a, a word for it or something. Quite a bit smoother. Let's see how it goes. Let's see if it starts to get sharp. Who knows? It's starting to get shiny. I feel a nice burr. Who knows, maybe I'm onto something here. Gotta be a better way to do this, though. This jig does not ride very smooth across here. At all. It's really not smooth. 
almost feels like this needs to be a harder plastic. I guess this would be a good thing for an airplane. I mean, not to, you know, kill the pilot or anything, but if we were to have a little extra protection on you, I suppose you could put this in a uh, business card holder and show the guys, hey, look, it's just, you know, a business card. I'm not trying to give you guys any bad ideas, but, I mean, what the hell. See the guys on YouTube videos, and it's like, do you guys lube this, or what do you do to this? This is terrible. It's really, really jickety. Maybe I missed a step in something somewhere. And this wheel too it doesn't seem to get as smooth as it did at the beginning. And I know I'm taking. You know, lots of sharpenings off this wheel every time I do this. I think it might be best to pick the grit you like, leave it, and get a dedicated, you know, 220 or 400 stone. Help for me, I would I would need three machines, you know, maybe a 220 or 400, a thousand to 1500, and of course the 4000. Which I'll probably end up doing. I'll be moving out of my garage soon. I have a pretty good sized store we do other businesses out of in the process of evicting a tenant. She's chewing up about 1,200 square feet that I would love to use to do knife sharpening and of course sell my knives and, and this stuff. Now, that's not paper cutting sharp by any means, but it would certainly do the trick in an emergency to person in an emergency of course not in a aggressive kind of way I don't, uh, I don't really believe in violence at all but I do believe that uh, responding to certain situations where violence is really the only answer So it does come down to that sometimes. I guess you could say I'm a proud gun-toting American. Here in Nevada, we have pretty lax gun laws. I'm from the Midwest in Oklahoma. When I was a kid, we all took guns to school. Every truck in the parking lot had a gun or two or three in the back window. How we even had uh, berms in the back of the school could set up targets on the school property and uh, shoot. And the funny thing is, given that everybody, probably even the cheerleaders, knew about gun safety, I'm going to switch to the Japanese whetstone now. Um, you know, it, uh, nobody ever got shot. And there were still, you know, scuffles and disagreements and whatnot. And, there was fights. I mean, when there's boys together, there's going to be fights, especially those girls around. Um, and we all put our guns and our knives and our brass knuckles and all that stuff away. And we fought like men, I guess you could say. And, you know, if you got your ass whooped, you got your ass whooped. If uh, you came out on top, you helped the guy up that you just beat his ass. And, uh, you know, shake it off, shake hands. And that was it. Nobody was coming back with guns and... You know, doing this wacky stuff that, that we all hear about now. I mean, it's insane what's going on in our world now. I actually had a young man, 17 years old. Of course, at the time, I didn't know he was 17. But uh, my wife and I were in a convenience store and gas station, and we run several businesses out of that location. 
one of our businesses is we register cars. And uh, I was just there doing my thing one day, and the cashier called me over, and she's like, uh, hey, this guy's got M&Ms in his pocket. Now, I don't know who he is. And, of course, I'm carrying, but he doesn't know that. And I very nicely asked him to take the M&Ms out of his pocket and pay for them or, you know, take off. Reaches in his pocket and pulls out a little revolver and tells me, F you, old man, I'll kill you. This is over a pack of M&Ms. So if you're smart, you would never draw your weapon when somebody's got one drawn on you already. So I didn't. I was able to talk him out of the store. And uh, he left, and then he came right back. Tells me it's going to be a tragedy. I remember those words very well. When he comes back and murders me, and he points out two of my employees that he's going to kill over catching him for stealing from me. Most thieves don't go that far. I deal with thieves every single day. They always try to blame me like I'm a racist or whatever. But hey, you got this stuff in your pocket, now what? Anyway, so when he came back, one of my other employees had just walked in. Didn't really hear what he said, but he says, hey, do you got a beef with that kid? And I said, yeah, he just pulled a gun on me. He's like, oh, I know him. Here's his Facebook page. And this little idiot is doing a Facebook Live as he leaves my store after pulling a gun on me and goes and gets himself a tattoo on Facebook Live. So I called the police. They got on his Facebook, and they literally just followed him down to the tattoo parlor where he was at getting his tattoo. They arrested him, and they wanted me to go down to the police station later to identify him. And I'm like, well, I have him on video doing it. You can't, no, no, you got to come down here yourself. But they said, come in a vehicle that's not yours with tinted windows, because we don't want him to see that it's you. And uh, so I did. And uh, I just lost my train of thoughts. Oh, so I identify this kid. It's around Thanksgiving time. And uh, so they hold him until the judge can see him for like 15, 16 days. And then I'm going back and forth with emails to the district attorney and the prosecutor and all this stuff. And uh, they're asking me, do I want to press charges? And, you know, it's assault with a deadly weapon because apparently pulling a gun on somebody is against the law. Now, there's really not much of a penalty for it if you're 17. But uh, nevertheless, so we go back and forth for months. And I'm supposed to come testify and all this stuff. And they tell me at the last minute, ah, don't bother. You know, we decided we're going to give him 200 hours community service. And I'm like, but that's a felony. Well, he's only 17, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, what if he comes back to kill me like he promised he was going to? Well, that's part of his uh, probation is he can't come back to your store or hang out with negative people. I'm like, are you kidding me? He wasn't supposed to come to my store with a gun and put it in my face in the first place. So how is that a deterrent from the kind of behavior he displayed? I mean, he pulled a gun on me and threatened to kill me. And, uh, you know, I could easily, as he's walking out, shot him in the head and been completely justified in doing so. Especially when he started walking back in the store because then I could have easily had the jump on him because he had the gun put away as he came back to threaten my life. But I don't want to kill anybody or hurt anybody unless I absolutely have to. But, uh... There's really no consequences anymore. I don't want to get in the soapbox too much about that, but there's really not too many consequences. I believe if I pulled my gun on somebody unnecessarily in a you know provocative way, threatening way, meaning not in my own self-defense, I suspect I would be doing some time for that. So I screenshotted every one of his Facebook posts since he got his account. He's got posts with guns and drugs and money and chicks. And he, even, he made a post that he, he only sells drugs now. He stopped doing home invasions because the money's better and easier in selling drugs. And he detailed a story about, you know, invading somebody's home where the husband and the wife were there, an elderly couple, and uh, he beat them up and blah, blah, blah. And the cops really were like, well, what do you want us to do about it? So virtually nothing happened to the kid. So this is looking pretty cool. It's starting to look like a blade. Hmm. This is fun. 
It's getting pretty sharp. I'm not sure if we're, we're paper cutting sharp yet, but uh, I think we're getting close. I wish we could adjust the angle a little bit more, but this jig is maxed out. So, and this is just for fun. I'm not trying to market, you know, razor blade, stainless steel business cards, but it's cool. I probably will sell them. Okay, now it's getting sharp. But I believe I'll have somebody else doing it. I don't have time to be sharpening business cards. Well, this one time I do. My son's picking up dinner for us tonight. And it's nice having a son that drives and can be independent and do stuff. Well, what a, tre a treat that is. I have another human being that I raised able to help out and contribute to the family and bring food home. That's awesome. Okay, so we're not razor sharp, but I could definitely cut something with that. Let's see. I still have a ways to go, but let's just see if it'll cut paper. I'm curious. I don't think it will. Probably will, you know, tear into it, but certainly before it wouldn't have done anything at all. So let me get a piece of paper and let's just see. Wow. Hey, look at that. Holy cow. That's better than I expected. Let's see. Look at that. That's better than some of the pocket knives I bought. Huh. It's not razor, but boy, it's sharp. Let's go a little bit further with it. Why not? I think another two, three minutes, we can get it uh, respectively sharp, potentially. And as a parent, I'll tell you what, I don't know why I'm talking about this, but I'm virtually talking to myself right now. I may or may not post this video. I don't know. But as a parent, it's a huge responsibility for all parents. Like the kid who pulled the gun on me, his parents get an F, F minus, on teaching your young man to be a responsible, contributing member of society. And parents tell well, you know, he just does what he wants. <laughs> That's parenting. I'll tell you a funny story, as I told you before. I grew up in Oklahoma, and there was this old man, he was probably in his 90s when I was a kid, and he just kind of sat on his porch. I don't know if he had a family or anything, at least not that lived around there. But all of us kids would kind of volunteer and help him out. We'd cut his grass for him and clean the leaves out of his gutters and stuff like that. And just, you know, everybody in the neighborhood kind of took care of him. And uh, he'd sit on his porch in his overalls all day long. And he'd be chewing tobacco, spitting in a spittoon, a little brass spittoon. That was my job. To, I was the youngest in the area, so I had to clean out this nasty spittoon after I got like two gallons of spit in it. But uh, I guess I was probably maybe 12, 13, 14 years old. He made it, he called me up on his porch one day, and I guess and there was a little bicycle track across from his house, so he could hear us yelling and screaming and carrying on like a bunch of kids. <clears throat> and he just said, he brought me over to his porch one day, and he said, he never even knew my name. <clears throat> and he said, son, nothing will ever taste the same again once you've had a boot in your mouth. And I thought he was crazy. I had no idea what he was talking about. A boot in my mouth? Who's going to get a boot in your mouth? Well, guess what? It didn't take but maybe another six months or a year before I ran my mouth a little bit too much. And uh, somebody beat the living shit out of me. Sorry for the language, but I got, I got beat good. And part of that beating was getting stomped in the face with a boot. Everybody in Oklahoma wears boots pretty much. And I think that's what he meant was, you'll get humbled one day, and sometimes you can't learn the lessons you need to learn until you've been humbled. Sometimes these lessons we learn have to be the hard way to really learn them. So from that moment forward, I've been a pretty humble guy. And my wife might say I'm cocky, you know, with the family and just having fun like that, but as far as out in public and, you know, being in a environment where it matters how I act. You know, I act very humble and respectful. It doesn't matter if I've got more money or less money than who I'm dealing with or whatever. Um, you know, I was brought up to be kind and honorable and always open the door for ladies. And uh, certainly your elderly, 
you go as far out of your way as necessary to help anybody who's elderly or anybody who's in trouble. You just do what you can to help them out. And my wife, she grew up in Las Vegas. She, she kind of gets upset sometimes because, you know, there's always those people that come to the gas station. Oh, I, I ran out of gas. I need money for diapers, whatever. Well, you know, I'm sure I get scammed plenty. Like maybe they don't really have a, a, an urgent need like that. And they're just lying to try to get some, some money out of me. Well, I figure if God's keeping score, then I'm getting some points regardless. So as long as I feel like I've done the right thing, if you jack me out of two bucks or, you know, a tank of gas or something like that, well then, so be it. I'm not going to get upset about it. I'm not going to, you know, uh, change being a, a good guy because somebody lied to me and convinced me to give him some money or whatever. Huh, that looks pretty cool. A nice shiny edge on it. And that's a business card. We'll do a few more passes, then we're going to call it good. Was kind of cool. Let's see if we can. Uh... Now, I can't give this card to anybody now, but I have a QR code on it, so probably you can scan that from your uh, your YouTube page. Let's see if I can get some more focus on that. Yeah, try this. See if you can scan that. See if it puts my contact info you through the video. I think it'll work. I don't know. My son and one of his buddies, they all work for me in, in uh, my design department. These young kids, man. They know all the new stuff. And I'm, I don't even think QR codes are that new, but I never knew what they did until recently. They started making business cards with the QR codes on them. So there is a stainless steel business card with a edge that will cut paper. Hmm. I suppose in a pinch you could uh, cut a person with that. I mean, I'm not going to try to shave my arm with that. Well, maybe. It feels pretty damn good. Let's just uh, get a fresh piece of paper and see how easy it goes through. I have no idea if this is going to get any good or not. Let's move this over here. So let's see. Business card, paper. Huh. It's not the prettiest edge. Well, actually, it's, it's not a terrible edge. I mean, it's not a razor edge. But, uh, huh. Whoops. Oh, that was no good. It's pretty good. And that's a business card. Maybe I should market those. Make an easier way, one at a time, would suck making those. See you, YouTube. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and give me a thumbs up. I guess like and thumbs up the same thing. Whatever, you know what I mean.